The second time on Gotham, give a big hand, John Moses. <laughs> Guys, the legend, Don Marrero. And, and, I think he fucked my acting coach. It was a woman, relax. Okay, moving on. Oh, I just got married, I just got married. Thanks, guys. And there are a lot of reasons why I married my wife. She's a beautiful woman, she's kind, she's generous, she's my best friend, all of that is true. But one of the reasons why I married her is because I know divorce is a thing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to live with her for the rest of my life, but I do know that I don't have to. I was up there and the reverend was saying, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife through sickness and through health? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he goes, and now for the ring, and the ring is a symbol of eternal love. There is no beginning and no end. It just goes on and on and on. And I was like, listen, this is nice and sanctimonious and everything, but my divorced parents are sitting right there. <laughs> You see that tired, broken down old man that kind of has my face? That's my father. You see the black woman holding his hand? Not my biological mother. That's not her. That's my mom at the other end of the pew, the one with the whiskey bottle poking out of her purse. Which is alarming, because it's an open bar, but here we are. I'm a product of divorce, that's what I know. Everybody in my family that's ever been married has been divorced at least once. My sister's been divorced twice. My cousin's second marriage is hanging on by a prenup. He doesn't love her anymore, but he doesn't hate her enough to give her a hundred grand to fuck off. So he's just stuck there white knuckling it. He's like, Aah! And I love my girl, man. I didn't marry her to get divorced. But if the going gets tough, I might get going. And I mean real tough. For better or for worse, has to fall on a scale. And as long as it sort of fluctuates within the norm, you ride that shit out, you know? Like extenuating circumstances. 18 months of unemployment, you don't get divorced over that. You ride it out. You got a mother-in-law that just keeps on living and living and living Christmas after Christmas, sucking up all your precious family time. Just ride it out. Two glasses of wine a day turns into a crack habit. I gotta go. <laughs> That sounds drastic, but I'm from Toronto where the last mayor smoked crack, so I feel like anything is possible. If it gets way worse, I gotta go, man, you know? She gains 20 pounds? No big deal. You fuck through it. Maybe Santa slides a yoga mat underneath the Christmas tree next year. She gains 140 pounds? That's another person. If she's gonna start bringing other people into this relationship, then so am I. I think I got a volunteer over there. She's like, it's me, I'll do it. I don't need a million dollars. <laughs> Just a couple of vodka and tonics. I'm an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. I quit drinking and doing drugs eight years ago. <laughs> Somebody, somebody just booed me. You're fucking telling me, pal. Jesus. And I just want to say this. Drinking isn't for everybody. But so is not drinking. I go to meetings. And I was at a meeting the other day, and this old guy comes in, like 75 years old, trembling. He goes, I need to quit drinking. And I was like, now? It's like three minutes left in the fourth quarter, and you're down by 30. Now you want to start d'ing up, dude? You got to drink more, man. Uh, put the foot down. <laughs> Start doing heroin. You know? And I come from a family full of alcoholics, you know? I come from a drinking family. And my dad, he's like a functional alcoholic. Worked hard, two jobs, but weekends, look out, you know? Fridays, come home, two in the morning, blacked out, order a pizza. Pizza would get there, he'd throw a slice in someone's face. And go to bed, like, fun, you know? We'd wake up the next morning, he'd be like, who ordered the pizza? We'd be like, Dad, stop it. You know? I was a maniac when I drank. I take it after my mother. I used to black out all the time. I black out, I woke up in jail, I woke up in the hospital, 
I woke up in the middle of a fight with a bouncer two seconds before he broke my nose. Do you know what it's like to wake up in the middle of a fight? It's terrifying, man. One time, I blacked out, woke up, making out with a hot chick, blacked back out, woke up four hours later, eating out a fat chick. And I finished the job. That's a good story. Yeah, yeah, we got some old school dudes in the back. They know fine dining. <laughs> my mother's a maniac when she drank, man. And not to get on my mom's better than your mom on you guys. But my mom could definitely drink your mom under the table. In her prime, in her prime. She's lost a step or two now, but in her prime, man, she could drink anybody under the table. She drank her husband into the ground. <laughs> He's dead now. But this is a happy story because he was a wife beater, so she's actually a hero. <laughs> she's not the hero all you hashtag feminists deserve. She's the dark knight that you need. Fifty years old, fifty years old, her husband died, cirrhosis of the liver. Terrible, he was in the bathroom, shit his pants, just, that was it. EMTs come, load him up on the gurney, and before he died, they're wheeling him out, and they push him past my mom, and he looks at my mom, and he goes, am I gonna die? And my mom looks at him and goes, probably. <laughs> probably? Are you fucking Clint Eastwood? Is this, the, is this the end of Unforgiven? Probably. But she didn't know he was gonna die, man, you know? And she felt bad about it. A week after he died, she called me. She goes, John, I didn't know I wasn't gonna see him again. And I was like, I know, Ma. And she goes, he wasn't all bad, John. I go, Ma, if it makes you feel any better, I thought it was hilarious. And she laughed a little bit. <laughs> Two months later, she found out he stopped paying on his life insurance policy five months before he died. All that sentimental shit was right out the window. She was like, that fucking weasel! Oh, he got me. He got me. And they hated each other. They really hated each other. The last eight years of that marriage, they just fucking hated each other. You know, they were just, they were like shut-ins. They were just sitting and drinking each other because they didn't want to embarrass each other outside in the real world, you know? And abusive, oh man, he was an abusive little rascal. But she would say some crazy shit. She would say some crazy, crazy shit. I remember one time we were all over there Christmas time drinking like a family. Me, my brother, my mother and her husband. And for the first hour and a half, it's Christmas. Everything's great, you know? First four drinks, my mom's all jovial. It's like, oh, son, honey, do you need something to eat? You look thin. Come on, you know, get a little, get a little more in you. And somewhere between that fourth and fifth drink, like a light switch flipped, you know? The possession began. Her voice dropped a couple of octaves. It's like, Ugh. And she looked down at the end of the table at her husband and she went, <laughs> I can't remember the last time you touched me, you limp dick faggot. <laughs> not a direct quote, not a direct quote. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but the words limp dick and faggot were definitely in there. <laughs> like, how do you tell your mom she's got to work on her pillow talk at Christmas, right? I was just like, <sighs> now, I'm a dude that's of the mind that a man should never hit a woman, right? And it, it, of course, like I, I feel stupid even saying it, but it's the setup. So, so, especially when that woman is my mother. But ladies, you have to realize if you say something as crazy as I can't remember the last time you touched me, you limp dick faggot, the odds of you getting hit goes up exponentially. You throw a little Bacardi on that fire, it's even money, right? That's why when I saw that Ray Rice video, I was like, ah, I gotta hear some audio before I can pass any final judgment. No, is he 99% at fault? 85, I wanna know, you know? And I told my mom, I was like, she would call, he's killing me, and we'd send the cops, and she'd send the fucking cops away, and I'd be like, mom, what are you doing? Just leave, and she goes, what am I supposed to do? Get a job. No, I'm telling you, my mom would rather get hit one day a week than have to suit up and go to work for five. She was like, well, Sundays are rough, but I get to sleep in Monday morning, so it's all good. <laughs> Guys, I had so much fun, man. My name is John Moses. Thank you very much.